Welcome to Good Life. I'm Dean Wilson. So glad you're with us. You can always find us at goodlifetelevision.org. Uh, many of you are. We're, we welcome you. And whether you're watching on TV Santa Barbara locally here or somewhere else in the world, we're so glad you're with us. Um, you know, we're here to talk about the good stuff. We're here to inspire and encourage and empower, honor, educate at times. There's, there's, it's, it's about the good stuff. And We've had some great people, so I think you'd really love checking out those interviews. You can also look at some power clips. We kind of break the interviews up into power clips where you can find those. And then we're also on the social media platforms. Love to have you join us there, and uh, we're just so glad you're with us. I'm so excited today about my guest, Jordan Evans, is with me. Welcome. Thank you, Dean. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. Jordan's a, a businessman, um, a great guy. Maybe we could just start with your kind of your upbringing, where you, you came from a great family. Mm -hmm. um, but talk, talk a little about your background. Sure. I, it's a broad question, so it can go a lot of directions. But the short story is a born and raised California and a multicultural family. My mom and that side's from Mexico, immigrated here to the U.S. for a better life. My dad's German-American, and that kind of leaves me confused <laughs> so, somewhere on the spectrum of things. But I credit a lot of to where I am in life and worldview to have, having grown up with great family, great parents that stayed together and uh, modeled um, love and modeled uh, their entrepreneurs too. Yeah. Um, so it was a really dynamic upbringing. Um, and I was fortunate enough to uh, come to Westmont College here in Santa Barbara in 2010. Met my wife Elise there. Uh, lived a stint in the Northwest in Seattle and uh, Sunshine uh, called us back here to right. beautiful Santa Barbara. How'd you like Westmont? Uh, it was great, Good great experience. place to go, yeah. I yeah. studied economics and Spanish language and literature and I, I rec can't recommend it enough. Yeah. We're, I'm a, we're fellow Westmont grads here, um, and we've got a long history of family at Westmont, but it's, it's, it's a wonderful place. Yeah. Um, so you grow up, you're watching your mom start a language company, mm -hmm. and then sooner or later your dad joined in kind of on operations, and then for 25 years they, they built this. Mm -hmm. Talk about that and kind of watching that and what you, what you learned. Sure. I think one of the great things about uh, being in this country is being able to better yourself or pursue any sort of career or job or create a business. Uh, and I got to see that firsthand. Uh, Mom was a Spanish interpreter in the 1980s. Uh, Spanish interpreter is spoken word, so going between English and Spanish. And she was helping out with uh, local law firms and. Uh, some local nonprofits too that had uh, limited English speaking persons come in and they spoke Spanish and needed help. So oh. she bridged the gap and that started uh, into a, a business which is Language Network. And she started in the uh, corner bedroom and before she knew it, people were calling saying, well, do you do Vietnamese? Do you do Mandarin? Do you do Arabic? And of course she doesn't, but right. she knew others that did and found others. And so it progressed, wow. and as a kid, I got to see her grow from the bedroom into the garage, and then finally out of the house. <laughs> and wow. uh, as you mentioned, Dad joined as well, and right. got to see both parents working together to grow the company. And then, late, so then later, you, you and your sister actually bought the company. That's right. So, and it's grown a lot since, right? It has. Uh, I think the, the funny part about that is Ariel, my sister, now my partner, uh, we used to watch mom and dad do work together. So as kids, uh, we would play business as well and go door to door selling cinnamon rolls or... Oh, really? Uh, yeah. It's earning it's a couple of bucks. Rolls. Yeah. <laughs> I love those things. But right. it, it was uh, our form of play it was business and it's funny to fast forward to now and right. we, we play it. business but we're, we're doing How many languages? Uh, we do 200 languages. Oh my gosh. Wow. So you have people all over the place or what do you, how do you do that? Sure. I, the gist of it is that we live in such a diverse place. California has 220 plus languages and so we cover 200. We're trying to keep up and we live in a country where it's 
it's a civil right uh, to be provided care uh, in your language. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing, I think, about the United States, uh, that if you come here and you can't speak English, that there are resources made available. And right. So we kind of bridge the gap. Yeah. Um, it's human powered. We work with uh, professional interpreters and translators uh, that are part of our network. And we send them out into the community, healthcare, uh, nonprofit, education, social services. I mean, it touches every cusp wow. and avenue of life. 200 languages. Mm -hmm. You know, language, is, language could be a barrier. Mm -hmm. But then on the flip side of it, it with when you, when you get over that barrier, it's such a beautiful thing mm -hmm. to connect people from, it is. I mean, that, which is kind of what you're doing, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So what's, if you had to tell somebody the elevator speech on what your vision is mm -hmm. for, is it still called Language Network? Yes, that's right. So what's, so what, what's kind of your vision or your mission statement or your sure. elevator speech? Sure. Well, fundamentally, our, our goal is to enrich the communities and people we serve. Uh, and that's by enabling cross-cultural communication. So we really function as a bridge uh, so healthy communities can interact, people can get health care, can have justice in the legal system, can have access to social programs. Um, so we kind of bolt ourselves on to the, the organization that we're serving, the local hospital, and their um, goals of providing a great standard of care to their patients. Right. Um, yeah, think about that. I hadn't thought about that, but the, the barrier between them and getting, you know, the, participating in the justice system mm -hmm. is can be language. Yes. So that's got to be overcome. That's right. Healthcare. That's right. And that probably translates into, no pun intended, but into many areas of life. Yes. Yeah. Where they need help. Yeah, every, every aspect of life. Uh, yeah. And uh, like I had said, it's just, I think it's a wonderful thing about this country. It, we don't have an official language. Uh, even though many people might think it's English, uh, this country doesn't have one. We have so many different religions and creeds and languages here. Right. It's a it's a wonderful country, that's for sure. I, l I love lots of things that I read about you, but one of them is you said, I believe the greatest gift we can give to the world is to be the best version of ourselves. Uh, it's a journey and not just a smooth ride, but it's in the moments of pain or struggle that we can grow from. Talk about that. Mm. I don't know why I wrote that, but I, I felt compelled to. I thought it was beautiful. <laughs> you you're, you're, that's how you live your life, I can tell. That's right. That's you're a reader. To. You're a faith person of faith. Mm -hmm. you're, a, you're trying to be the best Jordan Evans mm -hmm. you can be. Mm -hmm. But that's a, I think that's a really powerful thought that you wrote. <laughs> I don't know why you wrote it either, but it's good. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I, I think that. Part of the upbringing, I got to see uh, family striving to make themselves better, whether economically or individually. And I've also had great mentors in my life that um, have told me I can do more or push you. You know, I played basketball and coaches pushed you. And um, you know, it's always amazing to see that we're we're built for maximum load as as a species, as a, as a person, that we can carry more and do more than we think. Mm. And uh, that just kind of became a part of my fabric because I want to see how far we can go yeah. within, within reason. Uh, right. You know, I'm not going to be skydiving tomorrow to see how far I can go. <laughs> just right, 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 right. With wisdom. <laughs> With wisdom, yeah. Right, right. Uh, but yeah, life is so short. Yeah. It's, let's, yeah. let's make it a good one. Let's make it a good life. Right. Amen. Yeah. That's good. That's a little... Promo. That's like a plug. <laughs> a little plug. Another thing you said: the, the values you hold highly are integrity and grace. Um, it sounds like you're you witnessed integrity in your household growing up. Yeah. And that was impacting to you. Is that true? Yeah. It's funny that you asked that. I, I thought immediately of a time with uh, my dad, where we went to uh, a store. He was an angler or fisherman and wanted to stock up on all the goods to go fishing and uh, he bought a bunch of gear which is not inexpensive and we got back to the car 
And as a kid, I was excited to go with dad shopping. And he was looking at the receipt and was saying, I think they mischarged me you know, a couple hundred bucks here because I've got all this gear and the receipt's not matching up what it should be. And rather than just get in the car and go home and I got a good deal, he went back and talked to the cashier and showed him what he thought he should have been charged and paid the difference that he should have been charged. Wow. So I immediately thought of that when you said, did you grow up in a household of integrity being modeled? And that was my dad. You never forgot that. Yeah, I was a kid. I was very, very young. Yeah. Wow. And you have a good relationship with your parents, don't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's... I, Language Network was started by them. I'm so honored that I get to carry on a family business. And, uh, yeah, it, it's really a core part. I'm getting teary-eyed thinking about that drives me. That's fantastic. And grace. You said integrity and grace. Mm -hmm. Grace plays a large role in George's life and finds it important to practice the discipline of forgiving both himself and others. Boy, that's mm -hmm. a wonderful thought. Talk about that, practicing the discipline of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Because it's interesting mm -hmm. you say that, because I agree. Like, Because forgiveness is really like a command. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like a suggestion. Yeah. You know? And it all, I think it says somewhere in there, you know, if you don't forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting, but you call it a discipline. Mm -hmm. How does that play out in your own life? Hmm. Uh, another story that comes to mind was uh, as a teenager, there was a research project I had to do for school. And I met, we were meeting with uh, different figureheads of uh, local churches, you know, the synagogue, the rabbi, and um, the local church, the Catholic church, for instance. And so we met with the priest and he had asked us, you know, it's the greatest commandment and, you know, to love the Lord your God with all your heart um, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And so we had shared, he had shared that. He said, well, there's three parts to that. And we were looking at this uh, Catholic priest going, well, what's the third part here? And he said, it's to love your neighbor as yourself. So we stewed on that for a minute and he began to explain as well, how can you expect to love or extend grace in this instance to anybody if you can't for yourself. So I think the discipline of grace or forgiveness starts with yourself. Uh, that's part of living a free life, knowing that you're not a perfect individual and uh, the inner critic can be rough. Uh, yeah, so right learning the discipline of working through whatever inner critic that we all have and uh, giving yourself some grace so that way you can then be gracious to other people. Um, so that's, I think, the discipline of, of it. Yeah, that's really true. Mm -hmm. I think there's probably a lot of people out there who haven't forgiven themselves for something. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think that's probably true of most people. Oh, yeah, all of us. All of yeah, us. Or yeah, everyone, yeah. And, but that's a great point. Mm -hmm. Because when you do that, it unlocks the door and you can extend it then to others. Because mm -hmm. you yourself have experienced it. Right. That's a very interesting thought. Right. Do you have kids? No kids at this time, just a French bulldog. French bulldog. Yeah. It. We call wow. him our fur baby. <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, um... So for Language Network, first of all, what's the website? Uh, languagenetworkusa.com. Okay, languagenetworkusa.com. So what's your vision kind of? I mean, you're at 200 languages. You're trying, you say you're trying to keep up. Mm -hmm. You want to enrich, I think you said the mission's kind of enriching mm -hmm. lives and relationships. Mm -hmm. Do you have like kind of a vision as, you, as the head of this, the, as you look out mm -hmm. into the future? Mm-hmm. Well, similar to what you do, Dean, is vision casting and um, getting people aligned with where we're going and what's possible. Um, that's my job today, and, and fortunately I've been able to add a couple other companies in the language network where they uh, are serving their local community. Mm -hmm. um, but the owners, similar to my parents, didn't really have a way to exit. 
Uh. And so we were able to acquire them and bring them into the fold, hmm. uh, keep the interpreters and translators busy in the community, um, as well as bring in great people. Um, so for me, I'm really motivated by the people, yeah. uh, giving people a great place to work, keeping interpreters and translators busy in the community. Um, and I think it's to grow by being better, to continue to go find those rare languages uh, so we can be that bridge in the community. Yeah. Uh, it's, we're not trying to take over the world by any means, but in our small corner of, right. of uh, the universe, uh, we're just trying to do what we do really well, and that's bridge language gaps and cultural barriers. That's fantastic. And, you, and it sounds like you focused on the culture of your company as well right. as you do that. Which is great. Right. How many languages are there? Do you know? Oh, gosh, there are thousands. Yeah, I was gonna say, isn't in India alone, there mm -hmm. are like thousands and thousands. There, there are many different languages in India. There are thousands in the world. Many have disappeared. A lot of indigenous languages. Um, it's every day I'm learning about a new language, and I, and I work in this space. Yeah. So you must, you must, if we think about heaven. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about that? What that? How that? How's that going to work? Like all the, <laughs> we always think us. everything's going to be in English. You <laughs> know, guys us. like me, are, like it's, a, it's not going to be in English. You know, yeah. we're going to have, it's going to be a beautiful thing. Yeah. But, but uh, anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a good thought. It's talk about your bike ride. Yeah. And and I want to just say thank you. And um, your he's Jordan is doing this bike ride, and it's benefiting the Turner Foundation, which is is the organization that brings good life to you uh, but so I want to say thank you and then mm -hmm. talk a little bit about it sure well I'm riding my bike 100 miles and uh, I'm honored that I get to partner with uh, the Turner Foundation to raise awareness and funds for uh, what you guys do in the community um, Donnie who's a good friend of mine from Westmont College uh, actually turned me on to the Turner Foundation and the wonderful work that he's doing with you guys, uh, supporting low-income families and the community centers and mm -hmm. just kind of the critical needs that you guys fill and adapt and even helping families with de developmental disability. Mm -hmm. I think it's just such an amazing work oh, that you guys you. do. So I, I've always wanted to ride 100 miles, but I couldn't get leverage on myself too. So <laughs> this was the leverage. Uh, and now you're in. It's on TV. <laughs> it's on TV <laughs> yeah, now. You're riding. No backing yeah. out. <laughs> so fortunately, I looked on the calendar. There's a Century Ride, Santa Barbara. Uh, SB Ride 100 is the... Uh, SB Ride 100. Dot com is the website. But it's uh, 100 miles, 9,000 feet of elevation. And it's going to be a doozy. Probably nine hours oh my of riding. Gosh. October 23rd. 2021, the premier cycling event on California Central Coast. Yeah, 100 miles, Santa Barbara waterfront, foothills of Montecito and Carpinteria, the famous seven mile climb up Gibraltar Road. Ooh. That's a good one. <laughs> It'll kick your butt. And so, where do you, so you fin, like, if we wanted to watch you finish, it comes back to Ledbetter? That's right. It, it starts and ends at Ledbetter. at Ledbetter Beach. And it's about nine hours. That's right. Oh, my gosh. I can hardly drive nine hours. I mean, <laughs> I, I certainly, if I drive 100 miles, I need a break or two, I think. Yeah. This is a big deal. There'll be rest stops. You, know, you got to use the restroom. You got to stop and uh, you do. You stretch get a and break. refill. Yeah. Okay, good. There'll be some pit stops. but uh, Is that a Saturday? I believe, I believe it's a Saturday, okay. yeah. So Jordan's riding the, the Ride Santa Barbara 100, October 23rd, 2021, to benefit the Turner Foundation. We're grateful. And so if you'd like to support him and the Turner Foundation, how do they do that? Great question. There's a spot fund link that we're using. Spot fund? Spot fund okay. to, to raise. they find it on your Facebook page or somewhere? Yeah, I've I've shared it on my social media. I'll also share it uh, with the Turner Foundation. Uh, yeah, the Turner. Okay, so both of us will share it. So the Turner Foundation social media, you can find Jordan Evans social media if you, if you want to look for him. Um, but we'll post links to that spot fund so that if you want to support Jordan, 
I'm going to. We hope you will. It, uh, it's a fantastic thing. So thanks for doing that. Yeah, of course. And like the quote you read earlier, life isn't easy or smooth. Right. And I definitely think about that while I'm on the road. Right. It's a journey. And the butt starts hurting after <laughs> a number of hours on that small I uh, bet. seat. Well, hey, it's great to meet you. Congratulations for what you're doing with Language Network. With You just seem like a great guy. Thank you, Dean. Appreciate it. And thanks for the, doing the ride. Of we'll, course. We'll, we'll be rooting for you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.